Hi, I'm Krista Arthur, security consultant for Vox Network Solutions. Today I'm interviewing Eric Runnels, who is the senior security architect at Vox. Eric's going to be walking us through ways in which you can improve operational security within the contact center. This is especially important in today's hybrid work environment where you have some agents at home and you might have some agents on premise. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Hi, Eric. Hi, Krista. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. Good. Eric, how long have you been with uh, Vox? I've been with Vox for four years now. Oh, okay. Okay. And so you're really living in the operational security space. Yeah, we do very much live in that operational security space. Uh, we definitely take a look at it from a contact center, from a UC portfolio. We really look at it from, uh, are we making sure that what the agent is doing and the applications that they're using, are they secure? Are we making sure that our telephony is encrypted? Are we making sure that the applications that they're using are in fact secure? You bet, okay. we live in that world day to day. Every day. Every day. And let me just take a step back because when we're in security, it's like we have our own language and we know what we're talking about, but not everybody that's watching might know, might understand what operational security is. How, how would you define that? Yeah, operational security is really a mechanism for securing a lot of the uh, the core applications as well as, again, some of the telephony environments um, that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Uh, identifying a secure uh, certificate policy, mm -hmm. right? Making sure that the agent delivery is secure, uh, using tools such as VDI, uh, making sure that uh, we've got call routing in place to uh, minimize any type of effect for toll fraud. Mm -hmm. you know, so those types of things we all consider application or excuse me, operational security. Yeah, and just remind everyone again what VDI is. Uh, virtual desktop integration. Okay, Interface. how does the virtual desktop integration improve security for the contact center? So how that uh, improves the security is the applications are then delivered via a, a remote desktop. Mm -hmm. The business or the corporate applications do not have to reside on a personal PC, right? So the, the corporation doesn't have to worry about any type of data leakage, any type of customer uh, information being skimmed. Uh, they can control all of the flow of all of that information as well as encrypting all of the telephony environment. So we maintain our levels of PII and PCI level security. That's great. So let's talk about some of the more common threat vectors that affect the contact center. So you've already mentioned toll fraud. How does toll fraud work and what should um, the business owners or the business leaders within the contact center, what should they be thinking about with regard to toll fraud and preventing it? Yeah, so toll fraud is absolutely one of those security concerns that's often left out of the conversation mm -hmm. because it is a way for uh, the bad guy to register uh, SIP phones, generic SIP phones, generic uh, SIP laptops, things of that nature to the session border controllers and able to make any outbound calls to any of the malicious countries. Mm. Uh, there's also ways to mitigate that by making sure that we are closing any doors within the TCP UDP ports in which telephony traverses, mm -hmm. um, closing any type of trunk to trunk transfer, um, when we're looking at call center uh, vectors, right? Uh, which is really the, the if, who, and what, where statements. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that we're closing any of those doors that are going to allow a transfer off net. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so really leveraging a lot of class of service, a lot of class of restrictions in order to make sure that there are no holes for the bad guy to come in and do, uh, to make any malicious calls outbound of the, tele or of the, um, of the corporate system. What are some other, I guess, threat threats that we should be thinking about within the contact center? Yeah, so there's many other threat vectors that we definitely want to make sure that we're taking into account. You know, uh, malicious uh, insiders is really one of those, right? Yeah. And um, sometimes those really are sometimes an unhappy employee, right? Mm -hmm. And if they can use some of their login permissions or some of their influence within the company to go ahead and commit toll fraud, commit, you know, some level of, of, uh, 
of data skimming and things like that, you know, that's one thing that we we want to make sure that we mitigate. And so security awareness training is is very key uh, yeah. to to uh, you know threat or to mitigate a lot of the malicious insiders. I'm sure with more agents being at home, that's even more of a concern. Yeah, absolutely. It, it definitely is. And so that way we don't have, you know, people looking over the shoulder, right? We're making sure that we're hiding our logins and passwords. We're making sure that we're not being influenced by the bad guy to to, to get into a specific system and skim any, any uh, pertinent data to that particular customer. Yeah, so training is key. And what about... Well, and software mitigation is also key, right? So making sure that we're removing a lot of insecure protocols and we're moving, removing a lot of, of um, uh, insecure uh, software components such as Flash, Java, Internet Explorer, those different types of applications are critical Mm -hmm. as well uh, and are being exploited now as, as huge threat vectors within the contact center. Interesting. And what if, someone, an organization, an agent decides to leave. How does the VDI, does it help that process? Does it hinder it? No, it absolutely helps. In the event that we that there is a discharge of that specific employee, mm-hmm. it makes it very simple to remove their access or their policies mm-hmm. in order for them to access any of the corporate information and therefore not having to the corporation not having to worry about removing any VPN clients, any sensitive data that might have been downloaded or kept on a on an agent's PC that's local to their particular house or or uh, or desk, right? So mm-hmm. it's very easy for them to uh, to turn off and turn on um, these specific sessions. So it really sounds like VDI is the way for uh, contact centers to go right now. Absolutely, absolutely. For okay. a secure deployment and an agent interaction and experience, mm-hmm. VDI is is a seamless way, and that way they don't have to worry about um, is the uh, at home agent's network router secure, right? Yeah. Is um, so because it's all being done over the web, mm-hmm. and we're just all the agent has to do is supply keyboard and mouse in order to maintain or do their work. Mm-hmm. It makes it very easy to control the environment and ensure the level of corporate security out to the agent. That's excellent. And what about ransomware? Ransomware is a very real. Uh, threat. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, it always needs to be maintained uh, as a very real and security threat. Does VDI help to protect uh, the organization from ransomware because they are VPNing in? Or how does VDI help to mitigate the ransomware threat? Or does it? It really doesn't mitigate ransomware Mm because ransomware is really mostly triggered by an email, Mm -hmm. by uh, an agent being directed to go to a, uh, to a fraudulent website that the mm-hmm. customer is asking to, for help on, mm-hmm. you know, things of like that. So again, it goes back to that security awareness training and then as well as some other security applications such as email filters, email mm-hmm. gateways and things like that to mitigate a lot of those uh, ransomware type of uh, risks of, of clicking out and yeah. going out to a fraudulent uh, area and getting exposed to ransomware. Well, that's good to know because I think a lot of organizations, large and small, often think that there's one thing that they should be doing, but it sounds like there are multiple things that they can be doing in the contact center. So we have the VDI, the training, um, filters. What else would be a best practice for a contact center in today's environment to help to, to to protect the organization? Uh, another one would, would be uh, recording, right? Oh, ensuring okay. that we're making sure that when the agent is being recorded, both from a desktop process analytics, so mm-hmm. we're always understanding what the agent is doing, mm-hmm. uh, so we can ensure that there is being there's no data being mined off of of, of their existing desktop. There, uh, we are doing a pause and resume, or we're masking uh, any specific PII or mm-hmm. PCI mm-hmm. Uh, type of information uh, or HIPAA-based information. Mm-hmm. It's all very, very important uh, within the contact center to we for us to maintain that level of privacy. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me.
I hope you enjoyed today's discussion with Eric Reynolds on how to improve operational security. It's just the tip of the iceberg. So if you'd like to learn more about ways in which you can improve security, even compliance or privacy within your contact center, please call us today. We look forward to working with you.